I'd like to welcome the audience to the March 20th, 2018 Parish Planning and Zoning Board meeting. I'd like you all to please stand while Ms. Dickerson says the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity for us to gather together as a community. I pray that the board um, pray for wisdom and for knowledge to make good decisions so that we can honor and glorify you. We pray this and ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Honor the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Dickerson. Ms. Christie, would you please call the roll? Chair Art Little. Here. Vice Chair Randy Armentor. Here. Mr. Jake Forte. Here. Miss Latricia Cobb. Here. Miss Julia Dickerson. Here. Miss Joy Dickerson. Here. Miss Sharon Galicia. Here. Miss Janelle Hyatt. Here. Mr. Kyle Lee. Here. Mr. Janelle Hyatt. Here. Mr. Kirk Smith. Here. And Mr. Sal Williams. Here. Thank you, Ms. Christie. This is an eleven member board. It will take a majority of those members present to grant or deny any request heard tonight. The chair will refrain from voting unless that that vote might affect the outcome. The meeting will be conducted with me reading the request from the agenda. The planning staff will give a presentation and report their recommendations. If the applicant would like to add to the staff's presentation or if someone from the audience has comments, please come to the microphone, state your name, address, and the nature of your request. All persons wishing to speak other than the applicant needs to fill out a blue card request to appear form located in the back of the room. This form, this form must be given to the staff member prior to the reading of the agenda item. As required by this board's bylaws, in all cases, the proponents will be limited to 10 minutes. The opponents will be granted 10 minutes as well, with each speaker allowed no more than three minutes. I recommend that a spokesperson be selected if there is a large group wanting to speak on the same agenda item. If four or more speakers request forms are submitted, the time allotted for individual speakers will be limited based on the number of forms submitted. The chair has the right to limit speakers who present redundant <laughs> information or, person, or personal attacks. In unique situations, the chair may extend or the board may vote to extend the time allotted for speakers. After discussion, the board will vote on each request. I will announce the, des the decision of the board after the vote. The variance and exceptions request are final tonight. The rezoning cases will go before the police jury for final action on March the 22nd, 2018 at 5.30 p.m. This meeting is filmed, is being filmed by the Calcasieu Parish Government Channel and can be viewed on Wednesday and Thursday following the meeting. For additional run dates, check the website at www.cppj.net, Channel 5 in Lake Charles, Sulphur, Moss Bluff, Westlake, Benton, De Quincey, and Gillis, Channel 99, and Carlos in Grand Lake. At this time, please either turn off or silence all your electronic devices. Uh, at this time, we we'll take appropriate action to approve the minutes of the February 14, 2018 Planning and Zoning Meeting. I have a motion by Coach Williams and a second by Mr. Link. All in favor uh, to dispense with the reading of the minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item number six, case AB 0118-0007, a request by Lawrence Kragic III to abandon and revoke the original dedication of the West 120 feet of Long Pine Lane at 4160 Long Pine Lane in Ward 1. This case has been withdrawn. 
Item number seven, <coughs> take appropriate action on variance 0118-0033, a request by Joshua Fry for variance to allow a dwelling with less than required public road frontage. Required 100 feet, requesting 90, and with less than required lot square footage, requires 43,560 square feet, requesting 16,425 square feet. In the 5100 block of Fry Road in Ward 4. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Nabor and seconded by Ms. Cobb. Ms. Ms. Wallace, would you please proceed? This property is located in Carlos and encompasses about a third of an acre of property zone mixed residential. Uh, in 2013, the applicant was um, donated this piece of property by his grandparents who owned um, a lot of the property on his side of the road and a lot of the property on the other side of the road. Um, when he recently came in to get a permit to move a manufactured home on the property, he found out that the uh, lot is lacking road frontage and square footage, but he does intend to use the manufactured home for um, his own personal use as his residence. And because this lot is consistent with others in the area, the staff does recommend that the request be granted with the following conditions, that the development adhere to the site plan on file with the division, provided that the director may authorize adjustments, and that the manufactured home be skirted prior to the utilities being connected. Thank you, ma'am. Does the applicant have anything else to add to the staff's recommendations? Uh, we have no blue cards on this application. Does the board have any questions or comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. <coughs> Motion carries. Agenda item number eight, take appropriate action on case VAR 0218-0035. A request by Jimmy Porche for a variance to allow two dwellings with less than required public road footage frontage required 120 feet requesting 100 and with less than required lots of square footage required 15,000 square feet requesting 14,050 square feet in the 2400 block of Greenbrier Road in <coughs> Ward 3. I'll entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Cobb, seconded by Mr. Navarre. Ms. Wallace. This property is located south of Lake Charles and encompasses a third of an acre of mixed residential zone land. If the variance requests are approved, the applicant will sell the property to a gentleman who would like to place two manufactured homes on the lot for rental purposes. We have not received any written opposition to this request, but because the development is not consistent with the area, the staff recommends that the request be denied. Should the board grant the request, the staff recommends the following conditions that the development adhere to the site plan on file, provided that the director may authorize adjustments, that the manufacturer must <coughs> be skirted prior to the utilities being connected, and that approval is contingent upon DHH approval of a shared sewer system. Thank you, ma'am. Does the applicant have anything to add to the staff? He's taking care of for me. I'm Jimmy Porche. He's asked for stuff there. You would come forward and state your name and address, please. My name is Ryan Ware. Um, I live at 7026 Curtis Lane here in Lake Charles. Um, <clears throat> I was reading through the, the paperwork. I know the request is to be denied, but I went before the Department of Health and um, spoke with the, them there, and they required that if I was to use two, put the two mobile homes, they're brand new, they're both 2016, 16 by 80 mobile homes. Uh, they're set up in a trailer park right now, and I'm wanting to move them to this property for the purpose of investment. Um, my plan and intentions is, according to the Department of Health, is to have one sewer system, 800 gallon um, tank. Um, also, I see we're skirting. I have skirting purchased already. I know that was a, a concern and anything else that needs to be done to make this happen, I'm willing to take care of it. Thank you, sir. Does the board have any questions? Mr. Mr. Ware. Thank you, sir. 
we have no blue cards on this. No questions from the board. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. 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 Miss Christie, would you mind making a more call vote, please? Mr. Navarro? No. Ms. Cobb? No. <clears throat> Mr. Porsche? No. Mr. Williams? No. Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Link? No. Mr. Armentor? No. Ms. Galicia? Yes. Ms. Dickerson? No. Ms. Hyatt? Yes. Thank you. Motion fails. <laughs> Agenda item number nine, take appropriate action on case VAR 0218-0036, a request by Dinger Properties Incorporated for a variance to decrease the required number of parking spaces. Required 41 spaces, requesting 30 spaces at 3935 Highway 90 East in Ward 3. I'll entertain a motion for approval. Move. Second. I have a motion by Coach Williams, second by Ms. Cobb. Ms. Wallace. This property is located east of Lake Charles and encompasses over 11 acres of light industrial zone property. Currently on the property is a warehouse used by Solar Supply. A permit was recently obtained to construct a 20,000 square foot expansion of the <coughs> warehouse, which necessitates additional parking spaces according to the parish code. Because the expansion of the building will not generate um, an increase in employees nor an increase in vehicular traffic, the applicant is requesting the variance. We have not received any written opposition to the request, and because minimal impacts are to be expected, the staff recommends that the request be granted. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Do the applicant have anything to add to the staff's recommendation? Any questions from, from the board? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 10, take appropriate action on case EX 0218-0017. A request by Southland Executive Airport to amend EX040214 Stipulation 4 that the facility will be designated in a manner to ensure that all traffic related to the temporary workforce housing facility will enter and exit Viva Highway 27 South, subject to Louisiana DOTD approval and stipulation number 8 that First Flight Holding LLC shall not enter into contracts with any location to the north of the workforce housing facility. <coughs> to allow access from either highway, to allow access to the either Highway 27 South or Highway 108 West and contracts with clients north of the workforce housing facility at 7002 Highway 27 in Ward 4. I'll entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Cobb. Second. Second by Coach Williams. Ms. Wallace. And I apologize because I promise I prepared so well and I had these lovely thorough notes and the gremlin must have got to my notes and deleted them. So just bear with me as I, I go through the, the paper copies. But this property is located in Carlos. Um, in 2014, the board and the police, uh, I'm sorry, just the board approved a zoning exception to allow the workforce housing facility that's there now. Um, it obtained permits in 2015. It's been operational since then. Um, at the time of the board approval in 2014, we had been given a lease from the Southland Executive Board um, that contained a number of stipulations that related to the location of the customers that the facility could use and, and the access points and things like that. So as a staff, we recommended and the board um, voted to include those stipulations in the exception. Now at this time, um, the developers of the housing facility have been approached by one of the companies that they serve now. 
and these folks want to move some employees from a facility south of the facility to a construction site north of the facility, which would mean that the folks that are living there could stay there. But the issue is that these stipulations were imposed on the location of the customers and the access point. So there's really two requests before you tonight, and um, I know that the applicants are here if you'd have any questions on it, and I think they might be open to um, having some flexibility on those requests. But um, basically, they would like to have the stipulations amended so that they could serve a company north of the housing facility location as well as allowing just the buses that are related to those particular employees being able to use 108 as their access point. And the intent is instead of them coming out on Highway 27 where their existing access is and then trying to turn left, if they go north to Highway 108 and then turn right, then they can get to a light to turn left and we feel like it would just be a safer method of, of entering and exiting. But um, it is only about 10 buses that would leave in the mornings and come back in the afternoons that would be modified and allowed to use that access point. Um, because <coughs> we feel that minimal impacts would result um, from this amendment, we um, feel like, um, here we go. Because minimal impacts are expected to result from the amendments, the staff recommends that the request be granted with the following stipulations, that the development adhere to the site plan on file with the division, provided that the director may authorize adjustments, um, that the exception remains for Southland Executive Airport and First Flight Holdings and is non-transferable, that buses shuttling residents to work sites north of the facility may enter and exit via Highway 108 West only, subject to <coughs> approval of Louisiana DOTD and Southland Executive Airport Managing Board with all other facility-related <coughs> traffic remaining limited to access via Highway 27 South. That a natural buffer continue to be maintained as shown on the submitted site plan. That all exterior lighting must be oriented inward toward the development. That the Division of Planning and Development be provided with contract abstracts with all customers within 30 days of execution, and that the pods must be removed within six months of first flight holdings in date with its customers. Um, and also, uh, we have not received any written request to this request, so a written opposition to this request. Thank you. Thank you. Does the applicant have anything to add? Please state your name and address, please. <clears throat> Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Tom Gale. My address is 713 Kirby Street in Lake Charles. I'm here on behalf of the applicants this evening, uh, First Flight Holdings, who operates Miss Lake Village. And uh, Ms. Wallace did a perfect job of analyzing and summarizing what, what the request is. And basically, we're seeking to strike that stipulation that allows them to only service customers uh, to the south of the facility. Uh, just a couple of points. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Um, from a land use perspective and as a land use board, the land use is not changing in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and that stipulation got added on there historically. Many of you weren't here whenever we did it. But when that stipulation got added on there, it was done as part of the lease with the airport board. Uh, the airport has uh, allowed to amend it, and so that restriction is no longer part of that lease. And so we do have the approval and the support of Southland Airport to do this. Uh, when we first came and made the application, the first thing the staff said was, go talk to DOTD. And so we did that, and so we went to DOTD, and there is nothing in the permit that prohibits or precludes servicing customers from any direction. And as a practical matter, this is the only facility that I'm aware of that has any such limitations. And y'all probably remember, I was here last month, and we did a parking ride that's adjacent to this. And the parking ride doesn't have any type of stipulation that's in any way similar to that. Uh, of the man of the labor villages workforce housing that have been approved there's no type of stipulation as to who the customer is or isn't and as a practical matter some of this predates y'all's participation in this but this was the first one that got approved and I uh, didn't know how it was going to turn out didn't know how it was going to work and it turns out to be a pretty good product and it's working well and for every bus that operates in transport workers you're taking 40 cars off the road 
Uh, and the idea right now, and as part of the park and ride that we did last month, the same traffic engineers who did that park and ride also did this traffic study. And they were very clear that there is nothing that's going to affect the traffic pattern by going north. And the reason being is because the peak of the traffic right now is going down to Cameron. Uh, if uh, Driftwood LNG follows, then it's going to continue to do that. And so what's happening is the draw of the traffic is going south to service the large industries. And anything that's going to go back to the north is not going to affect it. And so the traffic engineers certainly support it, and you're going to see that as part of the park and ride. Um, which the traffic study is coming back on that. Uh, we have the support of the uh, Alliance in the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we've got letters of support from them, and we've got written uh, permission and written blessings from the uh, DOTD. I'm glad to share that with anybody who has interest in it, and we're glad to answer any questions. Uh, we'd appreciate your support on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Gale. Does uh, any of the members of the board have any questions for Mr. Gale? Mr. Navarre. I don't have a question. But if I remember right, when we approved this, we did this to help the citizens of Carlos where they would be satisfied. Now, I have my phone that rang off the hook. I have my phone hadn't rang like this in a long time. So y'all want us to grant y'all this, but then we're going to be turning, breaking our word to the people in Carlos. That I have a problem with, Tom. Okay. And, and, I'm, and I'm prepared for that. And so this has been in operation for four years now. And when we initially did this, nobody knew how it was going to work. And as you all know, what happened is we fought real, real hard for housing, housing, housing. And then think about how many RV parks and housing we've done. And all of a sudden, oil prices changed. Labor became available in different venues. And you all seen me up here doing parking more than you probably care to see. Uh, because now it's been parking, parking, parking. And so what's happening is the way it's operating and the way it's facilitating, we now know four years later that it works. And the, the concept of the labor housing works and it functions and it's functioned efficiently. And being able to move people through the buses is, is, is what we're seeing that's working. And believe it or not, we've got a permit approved to park people at Chenault so they can park and ride all the way down to Hackberry. Uh, and so everybody's going that way, that way, that way. And for traffic to go upstream on that is, is, is actually, they're relieving people and taking the vehicles off the road because these 200 workers who want to live out at Moss Lake are going to go to the job site anyway. They're going to get their jobs. They're going to get their work. If they're not living there, they're going to be living somewhere else. They're going to be living wherever they choose to live and operating and, and traffic and, and, and uh, uh, shuttling back and forth. And so at least this way you've got it south. They're not going to end up on the interstate. Hopefully they're not going to do what y'all had to fight to get here today over the bridge and uh, in that way. Have, have you gone? Have you driven on 27 at, at, at quitting time? I have. It's atrocious. I agree. It's absolutely crazy. And imagine 200 more cars added to that. Well, are you going to add 10 buses? But I'm taking off 30. <laughs> but, but they're not the cars. Are the you tell me the cars are coming north now? They're living there. What, what's going to happen? There, so they're not coming north if they're living there. They're not there yet, is what I'm saying. They're, they're, they're going they're, north to work and south home, correct? They're, they're not on the, on the site yet. They will be, and it, that's exactly right. Yeah, north in the morning, south in the afternoon. Correct. Yeah. Okay. If they're, they're, they're going to reside. Oh, my rain. God, yes. Well, every, every road in the Gosling Parish is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. Well, Chad, did you have a... I was just agreeing with the every road in Calcasieu Parish is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in South Lake Charles and to try to get off of uh, Henderson Bayou Road right now on West Prion to Isles is, I, mean, I feel like we're all uh, just generally frustrated with it. Uh, I do uh, agree with the, uh, the, uh, the man kept uh, concept and, and the shuttle buses just in general, just general comments for myself. I, whether that, I don't know if that matters, but uh, I think uh, the housing, I think we're already seeing it uh, with a lot of the, the supply outrunning current demand. Everybody kind of ramped up, same with, uh, with, uh, with rentals. Uh, so I, I think it protects everyone with the, uh, the temporary housing. Uh, it's a temporary solution for a temporary problem, so I'm, I'm for it. Um, but just, just in general, I agree, <laughs> the traffic is horrible everywhere. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments for Mr. Gale? I, I, I'm just really all for, you know, 10 buses over 200 cars any day. 
mean, I, I just think that for me, that's we should go more to that. That's why I pray for the parking rides when we get get the camps coming in. The parking rides are the next best thing, and yeah. I'm I'm amongst it. I'm all right with the buses. You know, it's a lot better than me sitting behind all those cars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But they're not there now. They're not. They're not at the man camp now. All right. The people that's, that they, they don't, they're going to hire 200 more people. Yes, sir. They're not living at the man camp now. Correct. So you're saying 10 extra buses that aren't running now exactly. are going to be running. Right. And see, our agreement was that the buses would would go south. And that's what we told the people of Corliss. That's why, that's why it's in there. Because the people in Corliss were against the man camp. And it broke my heart to vote against the people of Corliss that time because I knew, but and I've got a lot of friends and family that live out there. And, you know, we, we, we put it in then, that they knew what the stipulations were whenever they went out there. The man camp, the people at the man camp. And I was all for the man camp. I know we need that. But I, if, you, if you say we're gonna do this, and then two, four years later you come back and you wanna change it, I, have, I, I disagree. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Navarro. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Uh, we have three blue cards uh, request to appear. Uh, Mr. Brent Clement, <clears throat> if you would please state your name and address, please, sir. Yes, it's Brent Clement. I live at 7017 Sayer Road in Carlos. All right, thank you very much. And I agree with you all, the traffic's terrible. <laughs> let me let me kind of give you a little history to fill in and I mean we had some meetings prior to uh, prior to this ever happening they held them at the airport um, several things weren't mentioned that, that have come about um, one is they said that through the airport board that they would agree that they would go south well about I guess it's about a year or two ago, they went back to the airport board asking to go north. The airport board denied them at that time. So evidently, there's been something that has changed with the airport board's vision or whatever. But uh, so that's kind of the deal. They were denied. They, they've been planning this for a while. I mean, this isn't something that just uh, popped up on the radar screen. Uh, we didn't know about the airport board. We'd have had some local participation to show up to the meeting if we'd have known. But it went through the cracks and uh, we just learned about this uh, probably middle of last week. They, um, I don't necessarily buy the 10 bus deal. Once y'all change the stipulation, who's going? nobody's going to police this. Um, that's proof whenever they came to us the first time to the community, there was never a park and ride discussed. They took it upon themselves after they got the zoning. They put a parking ride on 27, and 27 was bad enough. It's a two-lane road, which y'all probably are aware of, that um, is under construction. <laughs> what better time, it seems like, around here. But the, um, it, it's, it, it's terrible. I, I, I just wish y'all could, my whole family lives out there. My kids live out there, my grandkids. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a life and death matter on that highway. It, it seriously is, and I'm not over it over dramatizing it if y'all been out there y'all realize there's wrecks you can count them it's daily and uh this is that's how the people from carlos get home in the evenings we go to work we fight the traffic now we're going to have it both ways and i don't buy the bus deal because once you open it up you change the stipulation wes you're going to have people out there watching counting buses is that yes that's a no answer okay <laughs> My point is that be careful what you ask for in this. I mean, they're going to they gonna downplay it. Yeah, it's only 10 buses. And I tell you what, if I honestly, sincerely believed it was going to be 10 buses, I probably wouldn't be up here today. A couple other things. They, um, they've been, and I, they're great guys. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, there's it's nothing personal with them. But, uh, but it is personal when my family safety is involved. Um, they, uh, there's been some issue with uh, the demand they've put on some of our infrastructure out there. I know for a fact, right now, and I mean, 
Mr. Gale can address this, and nuisance calls. And I mean, believe me, I live close enough, I hear the sirens all the time going out there from the fire department. The bill, and we just got it from the fire chief. We yeah. are, you have one minute left. Okay, thank you, Lord. Presently, in nuisance calls, they owe Carlos Fire Department $159,750. There's been some correspondence, reached out to them, asked them to attend meetings. They've never, uh, I don't think they've answered or, or yeah, that's news to y'all? Okay, well, if y'all if y'all want documentation, uh, I'll get y'all documentation on that. But, um, and um, I don't, <laughs> I, I believe me, I hate to, I hate to come up here and, and uh, I know I can appreciate the job y'all have in front of y'all. It's probably, y'all have the hardest board without a doubt to sit on. But, Thank you, Mr. Clement. We have to call you for time so that the other speakers can have their opportunity. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Can I? Any questions from the board for Mr. Clement? Thank you very much. I appreciate right, thank it. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> next, Miss Mary Ellender. <coughs> please state your name and address, please, ma'am. Good evening. I'm Mary Ellender. I live at 7736 Highway 1133, approximately just over a quarter of a mile just east of the airport <coughs> and the work camp. I would like to remind you of the headline Sunday paper. Traffic nightmare. <coughs> like you said, it's Lake Charles, Sulphur, Westlake, Carlos, everybody. Moss Bluff. And <coughs> in the short period of time that we knew about the, the <coughs> request, the, the airport, and First Flight Holdings has made in the last, it came to me yesterday morning about mid-morning. A lot of people can't get here to show and talk and tell you that they don't want this. They don't need it. It's a, it's a threat to their, the whole community and the whole parish. And so we put together a, 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 a little sign-in thing and it states the date yesterday. We, the undersigned, oppose Southland Executive Airports and First Flight Holdings LLC's request to reverse the contract stipulation that states that the use will be only to accommodate construction to the south. There, is recently, there has recently been two fatalities at the intersection of Highway 27 and 108 two deaths and that was the right work hour time when traffic was going somebody hit hit another these two people going south they were going east and he went south and they collided and they lost their lives to allow this exception <coughs> would be to add to the already horrific traffic situation that exists in Carlos Sulphur Maplewood and Westlake areas and we question the financial obligations to the area entities, the fire board and others. And I have here signed about 94, 95 signatures. Wes, you want those? I don't have a copy. First Flight Holdings agreed to this stipulation and the airport authority agreed to it. That was in the contract, and that should be upheld. That was when the people were had some input, and it, it should not <coughs> change. Their development is uh, future development is coming, also to the south. It looks like Driftwood is going to get their uh, their rest of their permits, and there'll be new development that way. If we're talking about 200 workers coming from the north to live in that man camp and being bused with what, 20 buses or whatever it is, then each man 
has his own car. Almost every incident, they have their own car. That's going to be 200 more cars on the road when they're not working. Miss Ellender, I'm going to have to say, were you, you love all your time, and that's the same thing that Mr. Clement was speaking of. So we appreciate you coming forward with that. Well, I have we something else, Mr. Little, that wasn't covered. Okay. One thing, please. Ms. Wallace mentioned that they, when they exit out on 108 and they turn <coughs> right and then they can go to a light, they, that light is not anything near there. Highway 27 and 108 does not have a light. Johnny Jones Road, which is just a residential lane, basically, it does not have a light. It's not until you get up to Fisherman's Headquarters is there a light. So. That, that was incorrect. <coughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Does the uh, board have any questions for Ms. Eleanor before she leaves? Thank you, Ms. Eleanor. I appreciate your service. We have one more blue card, and I failed to mention <coughs> a while ago, uh, the police juryman from that district, Judd Barris. If you would, please come to the podium. State your name and address, please, sir. Good evening, everybody. <coughs> Judd Bears, 2220 Bond V Drive, Carlos, uh, excuse me, Sulphur, Louisiana. Um, okay, I, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I just want to make sure that everybody here tonight knows what we're really doing. We're really erasing a, a, a stipulation. It's nothing about the man camp, the, the uh, false alarm stuff. It could be anybody, okay? We made a law, we made, we made an ordinance, or we passed something four years ago, okay? Well, say, say you know, we do this tonight. Well, then, from here on out, anybody can go around and say, well, just, just agree to those stipulations because we, we'll be able to get them taken <clears throat> care of later. I mean, essentially, is that, is that that's pretty much what we're, we're, we're going for tonight. Um, so as far as setting a precedent, <coughs> Um, you know, what do you want your decisions to be worth in the future? You got to look at that, you know, uh, respect what you do and, and, and I respect what you do. So do you want it? Do you want your words just to be, you know, babble on paper that can be disregarded at any time? Uh, this is bigger than that. You know, um, I appreciate your time and, uh, and if you got any questions, I got a question. Uh, yes, sir. I was hoping Mr. Clement would answer, but I don't think he would have an opportunity to come back. Uh, is the man camp stand that it is now by <coughs> the security? Do I, I do not know that. I, I want. I, I had to guess. It, it is them. They 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 provide their own security. If I'm yeah. correct. If I remember right. When we first initiated this uh, plan for the man camp, wouldn't the share to, our share department was That's what I provide thought. security? You're saying yes. I know that came up in the meetings I was in. The what, what about was the sheriff? To provide I, the security. I, I don't recall that they were going to provide the security, but I, I know that they were in support of the overall man camp workforce housing facility projects in general. If I remember right, Coach, they said off-duty deputies and policemen would be the security. So now they hired their own private security. Is that correct? I don't think they know that for sure. I think he was saying that that's what he thinks. I'd like to call the uh, applicant back up. Any more questions for I'm sorry. <coughs> Mr. Barris, I'm sorry before you leave. Speaking of applicant, the applicant's actually not here. Applicant is Southland Field Executive Airport, am I correct? Uh, yes, but the applicant's representative is here. Oh. Their lease authorized them to handle it on the okay. behalf of the board. Good deal. Is that it? Thank you, sir. Told you. Thank you. Mr. Gale. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How much time do I have, Sam? You're, you're good. Okay. The, uh, the answer to the security question, Coach, the security inside of the village is provided by private life and security. The traffic control that is done on the public roads is all done by officers. And so that, that's where that comes from. Uh, let me start. Do you have any specific questions I can address? Yes, ma'am. The 200 workers that are coming in, if they don't mm -hmm. use your bus system, can they live there and drive their own cars? Or no. do they have to have a bus? No, they have to have a bus. And that, it's, it's part of the residence requirement, and that's, that's part of the concept of the labor housing. <laughs> and if you don't let them operate like this, these 200 people are going to go out to other places in the community. And we know how we have mobile home parks that are functioning like labor housing. And those are all private cars, private residences. They're not police. They're not controlled. They don't have the traffic control. They don't have the stipulations we do. They don't have the requirements to take it down whenever it's done. And so that's the advantage of allowing this. And I think we all agree that the concept of the labor village works. We've all got growing pains. And, and we all recognize, I agree, it's a traffic nightmare. The buses are helping. Uh, it is not a perfect solution because we don't have a perfect scenario. Um, but there's 120 buses coming up and down Highway 27 every day. Uh, it, that's a lot of buses. And like I said, we've, we've got them coming as far as Chenault now, coming across because of now the bridge isn't trying to minimize the impact. What we're trying to do is try to help solve the problem. Uh, while there is a traffic nightmare, the traffic fatalities, the traffic accidents, the traffic wrecks, not one of those involved a bus. Uh, not one of those have had anything to do with, with the, the group transportation. This has all been private vehicles. And what we're seeking to do is to take those off the road. Uh, let's get them into the labor village. The land use has been approved, and that's not going to change. Uh, and the land use is going to continue to operate as a labor village. And whether the amendment passes or not, which we certainly hope it does, they're not going away. Uh, there, there's a need for it. And the reality of it, as long as we have a couple of mega projects that are going on south of Carlos, the Hackberry area, the Carlos area, your peak demand is going that way. And that's why DOTD is okay with it. That's why DOTD and, and y'all as a board approved uh, a, a park and ride last month. I mean, I've got the ordinance on it that, that we did this. And that's, that's the purpose is to take cars off the road to use and to enable. And that's what this facilitates. It, it just facilitates it out of a labor housing village instead of out of a uh, park and ride. Any other questions? Yes, How can you guarantee that it'll just be those eight buses? Cannot guarantee it, uh, and, and it's driven by the market, and that's what happened. Is like you know, how can you guarantee a seventy-five dollar oil? Because that's what happened. Because when we were here, oil was a hundred dollars a barrel. It was a very different dynamic, and all of a sudden it changed, and then your market conditions changed. Any other questions for Mr. Gill? Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I just I drive it. I drive in it every day, you know, and and so I battle it. The, uh, and I, I think four years ago, maybe, I wasn't on the board, but you know, you do things cautiously and you take baby steps and you put stipulations in to say, okay, if this works, we want to make sure we minimize in case it doesn't work, you know? I mean, that's the way I would do it if I'd have been here four years ago. That would be my reasoning, not because it's fixed and solid, this is how it's going to be. Now we know and we see that this is the way to do things, and I wish we had more of them. Uh, we need... I feel like we should expand and open up and get the buses are better on the road than cars. I mean, I'm in it every day. And, that's, and I can tell you, it is for me. It's buses are, I prefer the buses over the cars. And, and that is precisely correct. That was the, the wisdom of doing it. And this is part of the legislative process. We're, we're not trying to do this in the dark of night. Uh, we put out public signs, and, and it's part of the ordinance. And that's why the staff made sure that stipulation was part of the ordinance. So we have this discussion and go through this process. Uh, and we're not bypassing anything. And our legislature is in session right now, and they're creating new laws and amending laws that are already on the books. And that's what our police jury does and at a more local level, and that's part of what we're doing right here today. We found something that works, and we found, and you know, we've got a better mousetrap, and let's expand it and let's make it, utilize it to its, its maximum utility. One more question. Sure. So you have policemen out there directing traffic in the mornings and the afternoons? Correct. And that's part of the DOT permit and stipulation. I do have a couple comments in regards to me being in that area. Uh, as Ms. Ellender stated, there's not a red light until you get to Dave Dugas Road. So those buses coming out and going to a red light and making a turn is not gonna happen unless they go west and make a circle back down Dave Dugas Road. Uh, so they can, you know, that's gonna be a hindrance. 
using Johnny Jones Road, which is going to be hard to police because of what's going on in the area. They're going to be using Johnny Jones Road and get up to the curb where they can get closer to that red light and get on that road. Uh, my biggest thing against this whole thing is like what Mr. DeVar said and Mr. Bear said. Those people came up here asking for uh, hope and prayer that it wouldn't happen, but when it didn't happen, they asked for stipulations. And the taxpayers and Carlos asked for that. And so did some of the other parts of the parish on some of the ordinance they've got. So, I mean, and Mr. Gale is correct. I mean, this, this is how our system works. We come up and ask for it. But are we going to let our taxpayers know that they can come up here and get something put in and knowing that it's going to go out if someone comes up and asks for it? That's all I have to say for it tonight. Anyone else have any questions or comments? General comments. Um, one, one thing I, I agree with everyone, the, the problem is here, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, parish-wide. Uh, these workers are coming. These 200 workers or 300, whatever it is, they're coming. This job uh, will get done. Mm -hmm. um, there is a need uh, for this facility, this current facility, otherwise these gentlemen wouldn't be here before us uh, if there wasn't a demand for their product. Um, it's, you know, it is, uh, I agree with Mr. Armitar, um, you know, there's a lot of decisions I've made as an individual and I, I, I guarantee us as a corporate body that we made four years ago, now four years have passed, we look back and said, you know what, I probably do that differently uh, so I don't want to I, although I agree with the concept of we need to do things that set a precedent and stick to it uh, there is room to say you know what maybe that wasn't the best decision and uh, and that's the reason we're here I mean we already have the ordinances if we were just going to stick with the ordinances and not allow any exceptions or variances we wouldn't need to be here um, so that's just my comments uh, the problem is here and if you you know, uh, a lot of us, I don't work in, the, in my neighborhood. So this problem and this traffic is going to go somewhere. It may be somewhere in Sulphur where people from Carlos will have to interact with that traffic maybe 20 minutes from their house or 10 minutes. But the problem is here and, and it's uncomfortable and, uh, and we're all dealing with it. And I, I, I feel like I, I feel for the people in Carlos. I feel for the people in Sulphur, Lake Charles, Iowa, er everywhere. Thank you, Ms. Forte. Uh, Ms. Christie, can we have a roll call vote, please, ma'am? Mr. Williams? Yes. Ms. Cobb? Yes. Ms. Galicia? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Navarre? Nope. Mr. Porsche? Yes. Ms. Hyatt? No. Ms. Dickerson? Yes. Mr. Link? Yes. Mr. Armentor? Yes. Eight for two against. Motion carries. We'll move to agenda item number 11. Take appropriate action on case EX 0218 0018, a request by Emory Swallow for an exception to allow residential development modular home in the 6,000 block of Central Court in Ward 3. I'll ask, I'll entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Cobb, second by Coach Williams. Ms. Wallace. This property is located south of Lake Charles and encompasses nearly one and a half acres of single family <coughs> residential zone land. If approved, the applicant will sell this lot and the adjacent lot to a couple who would like to move a modular home on the property. The home will serve as the residence for the purchasers. They plan to leave the second lot vacant. We have not received any written opposition to this request, and because the proposed use is consistent with the character of the area, the staff recommends that the request be granted with the condition that the development adheres to the site plan on file, provided that the director may authorize adjustments. Thank you, ma'am. Does the applicant have anything to add to the staff, staff's recommendations? Uh, any of the board members have any questions or comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 12, take appropriate action on RZ 0218-0053, 
a request by Westlake Petrochemical LLC to rezone from light industrial I-1 to heavy industrial I-2 to allow industrial development, petro petroleum storage in the 500 block of Dennis Road in Ward 4. I'll entertain a motion for approval with conditions. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Ms. Dickerson, second by Mr. Navarre. Ms. Wallace. This property is located south of Sulphur and encompasses just under an acre of land. If approved, the applicant will sell the land to a LOC bulk plant property, a company that also owns the truck, the track that abuts the property to the west. In 2017, the board of the police jury rezoned the abutting property for that company to allow petroleum storage there. <coughs> Since that time, the company found that a pipeline crossing necessitates a change in the location of their tanks, and this impediment has resulted in the plan for this particular property. We have not received any written opposition to this request, and because the use is consistent <coughs> with the character of the area, the staff recommends that the request be granted with the following conditions that the development adhere to the site plan on file, provided that the director may authorize adjustments, that a drainage impact analysis be required unless appropriate waivers are granted by the Division of Engineering, and that a local development permit must be obtained within one year of zoning approval or the property will revert to the original zoning. Thank you, ma'am. Does the applicant have any, anything to add to the staff's recommendation? Board members have any questions or concerns? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion carries. We'll move to agenda item 13. Take appropriate action on RZ 0318-0058, a request by Western Real Estate LLC to amend ordinance number 6722. RZ040-02516, stipulation number three, that the rezoning is for Western Real Estate LLC and Lake City Lodging Incorporated and is non-transferable. And stipulation number nine, that the development is subject to a de development agreement between Western Real Estate LLC and Lake Charles Lodging Incorporated and the police jury outlining the conditions of approval for rezoning and future exceptions to allow the rezoning and the exception to be transferred to a new developer and to allow the new developer to execute the development agreement at 2751 Bayou Den Road in Ward 4. I'll entertain a motion for approval with conditions. I have a motion by Ms. Glacier, seconded by Ms. Cobb. <coughs> Ms. Wallace, please. This property is located south of Sulphur and encompasses nearly 17 acres of heavy industrial zone property. In 2016, the applicant obtained approvals from both the board and the jury to allow a temporary workforce housing facility. The approval was conditioned upon the previous lessee being the developer of the facility. Since that time, the lease with the previous lessee has expired. The applicant would like to move forward with the development of the housing facility, but with a different developer. The new developer is Aries Building Systems, and that developer plans to utilize the same site plan that was proposed and approved with a total of 1,026 beds. To allow the project to continue, the applicant must receive approval from both the board and the jury to allow the conditions to be modified. And because minimal impacts are to be expected from the amendments, the staff requests that the request be granted. The staff recommends that the request be granted with the following conditions that the development adhere to the site plan on file, provided that the director may authorize adjustments, that a drainage impact analysis and traffic impact analysis must be submitted and approved by the Division of Planning and Development and the Div Division of Engineering uh, prior to permit issuance, that the rezoning is for Western Real Estate and Aries Building Systems and is non-transferable, that a landscape plan must be submitted, that a natural buffer is maintained to the maximum extent possible, that all exterior lighting must be oriented inward toward the development or structures to minimize intrusion onto surrounding properties, that the Division of Planning and Development be provided with contract abstracts with customers within 30 days of execution, that the pods must be removed within six months of Aries Building Systems in date with its customer, 
that the development is subject to a development agreement between Aries Building Systems and the police jury outlining conditions of approval for rezoning and exception as well as any mitigation measures identified by the TIA and the DIA and shall include a code of conduct for residents which can be amended upon mutual agreement and that only the residents be allowed to utilize this housing facility's park and ride services. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, does the applicant have anything to add to the staff's recommendations? Any comments or questions from the board? I have one question in regards to the drainage analysis. Is this grandfathered in or does it fall back under the new drainage ordinance that has been put into place? It depends on when they submit it. If they apply for their permit and submit the DIA prior to the June 1st um, ah, okay. date that the That's new ordinance becomes effect. effective, okay. yes. Thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item number 14 is to advise that the police jury took the following action on February 15, 2018 with reference to the recommendations of the Planning and Zoning Board from the February 14, 2018 meeting. Gidry on Robinson Road, Planning and Zoning approved, police jury upheld, Division of Planning, McNeese State, Planning and Zoning approved, the police jury upheld, Hackberry Investments, Highway 27 South, Planning and Zoning Approved, Police Jury Upheld. AMAC, Cormier Road, Planning and Zoning Approved, Police Jury Overturned. Farley on Royer Loop and Highway 27, Planning and Zoning Approved, Police Jury Deferred for 30 days. Prairie Land Company, Gulf Highway, Planning and Zoning Approved, the Police Jury Upheld. Pierre's Ridge Lake Street, planning and zoning approved, the police jury upheld. The next item on the agenda is to advise that the next regularly scheduled planning and zoning meeting will be held on Tuesday, April the 17th, 2018 in the police jury meeting room. Adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion by Ms. Dickerson. Second. Second by Ms. Cobb. Meeting adjourned.